Hello my friends, how are you? So here I am again and uh, still in California and today I thought I'd share with you how by re-experiencing and reframing our experience of time we can actually influence our biological age. So, of course, uh, a lot of people probably remember that uh, I wrote a book in the 19, uh, early 1990s called uh, Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. And then uh, a little later, I wrote uh, with my colleague, David Simon, uh, Grow Younger, Live Longer, The Ten Ways to Reverse Aging. <coughs> Many people have criticized me for these two books saying, I look at Deepak, he's aging. And so what's he talking about? First of all, I should tell you that my biological age is uh, actually still uh, much younger than my chronological age, which is 73. And I have the same physical and mental capacity that I had uh, 40 years ago, probably uh, actually more. So uh, I am a good example of um, how to influence the uh, experience of aging. Shraddha Adukya Hai in Hong Kong. So let's talk about this, okay? Let's uh, talk about just the experience of time today. Uh, we can talk about uh, other experiences. Uh, somebody, Catherine, says the book is backwards. Yes, that's intentional. We have to start to looking uh, backwards as well. So, <laughs> um, shall we talk about today's topic? Uh, we almost are here, a thousand people. So I think we should uh, um, start our conversation. I'll start again by um, two uh, beautiful expressions that come from the Vedanta. The first is space begins, the experience of space begins when we identify with ourself as in the body. <clears throat> so as soon as you think you are in the body, then you have the experience of space. Time begins uh, when we start thinking. So time is the internal dialogue. It is the movement of thought that separates the observer from the observed. And then um, limitations. So space begins when we think we are inside a body. Time begins when we start thinking. It's the movement of thought, the internal dialogue. And then causality begins when we think in terms of limitations. Once again, causality begins when we think in terms of limitations because ultimately everything is infinite. That's the first shloka. The second shloka, I think, is also from the Rig Veda. It says, time is the consumer. Oh no, it's maybe from the Yoga Vaishishta. Time is the consumer and we are its food. Time is the consumer and we are its food. We are time's food. So as we consume time, our biology ages. Okay, now let's go um, and understand these concepts, okay? Um, because they are concepts and uh, ultimately, um, if you want to really uh, understand how to influence the aging process, then you have to transcend all concepts, including the concept of time. But let's uh, begin with uh, the second one, because I've commented on the first set of shlokas in the past, and this one says, time is the consumer and we are its food. Okay, so let's look at time just scientifically, you know, because it's to our current science, the arrow of time is still a mystery. Shraddha Dukya says, 
Ashtabhakra, she's right. That's where it comes from, that uh, beautiful quote. Thank you, Shraddha. The one about, uh, about, um, about the fact that uh, space is the experience of being in the body, time is the movement of the internal dialogue, and causality is uh, a result of thinking and limitations. So that's very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shraddha. Um, can you send the reference again? Okay, so now going back to our discussion. What we call our biological organism, uh, this biological organism, it's actually an activity and it's, as I said many times, it's a verb and it is the metabolism of experience. Once again, the body is a verb as a biological organism, it's an activity and it is the metabolism of experience. These experiences uh, all shape everything that's happening in the body, including how it's aging. So eating, breathing, digestion, metabolism, elimination, sensory experience, thoughts, memories, emotions, desires, uh, imagination, visualization, uh, anything you can call an experience is metabolized as the molecules of your body. In fact, there's a phrase in Ayurveda which says, um, if you want to know what your experiences were like in the past, then look at your body now. If you want to know what your body will look like in the future, then look at your experiences now. And by changing your experiences, you change um, your biological organism because your biological organism is the metabolism of experience, including sleep, dreams, food, sensory uh, uh, experiences, Shraddha saying spaces inside and outside. Yes, spaces inside and outside, but the experience of outside space comes from the notion that we are inside the body, <clears throat> which we are not, because even the body is an experience in our awareness. Now, we've said that before, right? You're not in the body, the body's in you. Okay, so let's now um, say time is the consumer, we are its food, but we are metabolizing every experience. And every experience happens in time. In fact, time, the movement of thought and the changing experiences from moment to moment are all the same thing. Now, in Eastern wisdom traditions, sometimes this is called karma, not sometimes, always being identified with the experience, whether it's the experience of the body or the experience of the mind or perceptual experience that we call the world, is called karma. Karma simply means action. And karma is not only past experience as a result of actions um, consciously or unconsciously taken, but uh, karma is also the interpretation of those actions based on human constructs, including religion, mythology, history, and uh, history, basically national history, everything that we call conditioning. So karma is the conditioned mind, and the conditioned mind is the movement of thought. <clears throat> now, of course, in science, uh, space-time is uh, what is creating gravity. The curva curvature of space-time is creating gravity. And uh, Shraddha again says Prarabdha. Very good. Desires, Vasanas. Well, you don't need to be in this conversation, Shraddha. So, okay. We are metabolizing experience, which is also metabolizing time. Same thing. Okay. And so, when does time slow down? Time slows down as an experience in dreams. It becomes uh, not so linear. Time slows down when um, we are caught up in a daydream or reverie. Time slows down 
when we imagine. Time slows down when we repeat a mantra. Time slows down when we fall in love. Time slows down when we have mindful awareness of any perceptual experience. Time slows down uh, when you have mindful awareness of uh, mental space. Time slows down when you have mindful awareness of sensations in your body. Time slows down when you have um, uh, a focused awareness on a color or a shape or a form or a sound or a taste or a smell or a texture or any experience. Basically, the awareness of the experience without being attached to the experience is freedom of karma. So anytime the scenery becomes overwhelming, all one has to do is shift attention to the seer, the presence of being in which the scenery is changing. The scenery is in time, but the seer is never in time. So any time you feel overshadowed by any experience, instead of being caught up by the evanescent, transient, ephemeral, ungraspable experience, just shift awareness to itself, to the presence in which the experience is happening. And right that moment, you will have escaped the clutches of time. Remembering Rumi's great phrase, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? Yes, the silent witness is not in time. Okay, now of course today science is talking about singularity. In a black hole, time slows down uh, or disappears. And the singularity is the coming together of space-time energy, information, matter, all into one immeasurable uh, field of potentiality, whatever you want to call that. That's the scientific model. So time slows down when you move at the speed of light, time slows down when you cross the event horizon, time slows down when the gravitational field is intense, on and on, you know, but that's not how we experience time. We experience time as the movement of thought. So instead of identifying with the thought, instantly be aware of the presence in which the thought is in arising and subsiding. And in that instant, there is no time. Of course, we talk about the other pillars of well-being, which are also basically experiences that are metabolized into our biology. But I hope uh, the shloka is clear for now. Time is the consumer, we are its food. Space is an experience when we think awareness is inside the body, but remember, awareness has no container. The body is in awareness. So, um, the experience of space is created in consciousness. The experience of time is created in consciousness. I had a good time, time flew. I was bored, time started to drag. I fell in love and there was no time. So let not time be the consumer. How to overcome, I forgot, I couldn't see it. Okay, thank you. My friends, uh, Juanita, thank you, Rose, thank you, Shane, thank you, Pamela. Who am I? Pamela, you're the infinite being having the experience of a person called Pamela. All you guys are so ahead of everything I am saying that I, um, I don't feel sometimes I have anything new to say, but we keep shooting the breeze and little clarity every day, more and more. And on we move. Thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.